main point about this movie is the the idea of the you possibly can kill a god. The point of this movie is that, that we have freedom to make fun of anything that we want. Kim Jong Un is a fan of like Katy Perry. He is a fan of a lot of basketball players. He's a big fan of James Bond movies. Kim Jong Un is a master manipulator, like the movie in the interview. That is a guy we had to worship all our life. That is a guy we had to believe that he can show up in the west and the east in one second. Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I am going to talk about the movie interview. So many of you have asked me about what does North Korean think of the movie interview that made by Sony. It is a satire movie where they are assassinating Kim Jong-un. Uh, when that movie came out in 2014, I believe, in the winter time, the North Korea got really upset and they actually hacked Sony and revealed you know, how all the celebrities who got paid Sony and a lot of insider information. It was a big embarrassment to Sony but also the world learned how much Kim Jong Un takes his pride seriously. He actually, Kim Jong Un said that if any movie theater that shows this movie interview, he was he was going to do something like 9/11, pull up those movie theaters in America. Eventually, Obama had to come out and say that, you know, in this country we have freedom of speech. We are not going to listen to some dictator, you know, somewhere in the world and tell us what to do. Even though they said that, still all these like main theaters pulled off. So I had to go in this independent small theater in New York to see this movie on Christmas Eve in 2014. Back then, my English wasn't that good, but I think still like for me to seeing it was such an act of uh, rebellion and also proof that I'm a free person from this dictator. I mean, a lot of people really get caught up with this fact. Is this like a good joke? Is this funny? What is the storyline? I mean, we can talk about all of it, but the main point about this movie is the, the idea of that you possibly can kill a god. That is a shocking thing for North Korean people. When we are in school in North Korea, we don't learn about French Revolution. We don't learn about how people fought for their you know, freedom and dignity. We don't even think that's a possibility to stand up against evil and stand up against the power. Therefore, just the idea, the, the, the scenario you know, of that you can actually kill Kim Jong-un. That is so shocking. That is why Kim Jong-un was so afraid that he, he was like ready to go war over this movie and hacking Sony like that. I, was, uh, I went to South Korea with my North Korean defector activists in South Korea to sending these leaflets and this movie to North Korea. And I will just like, in a second, I will show about what North Koreans actually thought about this movie, you know, except other than my own opinion. Personally to me, now I, I saw it actually the other day before doing this video, I saw the movie all over again on Netflix and it was so hilarious. Back then, I guess I was still very conservative, so a lot of jokes were, you know, back then I didn't really appreciate it and I thought it was like, oh, that's too much, that's a little bit too offensive. But the thing is that the point of this movie is that, that we have freedom to make fun of anything that we want. There's no limit to us that we, we can criticize, you can make fun of it. So, you know, besides all about the sexual jokes, all of that, this is such a brilliant idea because Kim Jong-un is a fan of like Katy Perry. He is a fan of a lot of basketball players. He's a big fan of James Bond movies. You know, there are like a lot of theories that Kim Jong-un might think of himself, you know, as a James Bond. You know, in his imagination, he might be as cool as James Bond. Therefore, I think as Kim Jong-un invited Dennis Roman to play basketball and had a party with him like that. If Sony didn't make a movie, I am pretty sure Kim Jong might have invited some American talk show host or comedian to interview him. That's very plausible because 
Kim Jong Un is a master manipulator, like the movie in the interview. Kim Jong Un, like you guys saw how Kim Jong Un acted in such a sane, gentle manner with Trump in Singapore and Vietnam. And then he also pulled off this entire show, engaging with you know South Korea President Moon Jae-in. He looked like such a normal guy. You know, he was talking about, oh, our country is not as developed as South Korea or America. You know, we are really humble to having you guys support. He was saying, all I care is like North Korean people's well-being, and you know, I have every intention to open up and be normal. That was entire manipulation. What Kim Jong Un wants is like none of those stuff. What he wants is maintain his power and be a god in this 21st century as long as possible for his family line. That's all he, Kim Jong Un wants, and that's all he cares. Like that thing in the movie, I was really appreciate the point where they go to North Korea and initially they see these like grocery stores and fat child, you know, they just like eventually believe like, oh, no one is starving in North Korea. It is all Western American propaganda. And this is a point actually I met so many people in the West from, you know, South America, from Spain, even North Korea, all of that. They keep saying like, oh, American propaganda saying that North Koreans are starving. Actually, North Korea is such a, you know, better country than even America. And so like that, you know, the, the, the main two guys are actually started believing that lie and one of them and then later realized what a lie that was. Kim Jong-un is an expert on manipulating people and changing people what they believe. Therefore, it's so easy to be manipulated by Kim Jong-un. And I think that's why no wonder as you guys, in a lot of my, a lot of people haters that I have, maybe they've been deceived. They have so many people believe that actually America is worse than North Korea and North Korea is suffering because of the American and Western aggression. So, you know, it was really like eye-opening for me and also you know, refreshing to see that, you know, in, even in this stupid satire movie, they talk about how brilliant Kim Jong-un is and how he can manipulate people's psychology. It was like so dead on, that point was so right. And another thing is that uh, if the, Kim, the idea of why it is so important to, to talk about Kim Jong-un that he goes to the bathroom. Right, like initially they go to North Korea to kill Kim Jong Un, but they say, "Oh, in this interview, I'm going to reveal that their bullshit their leader actually poops." That's what he said, and that is so right. You know, even just removing Kim Jong Un without exposing this truth that he is a human and he is actually a bad dictator. That's really important for North Korean people to know. A lot of people do still believe that first Kim, Kim Il-sung was a good guy among North Koreans. They do not, they do know that like Kim Jong-il and Kim jong nam is not so maybe great, but a lot of people still think like the first Kim is like, oh, actually a genuine good guy who worked for North Korean people, even though he was a very brutal murderer and dictator. Therefore, in that interview, he was eventually making Kim Jong-un cry. Right, he was talking about, oh, your father, you know, drinking margarita is a gay, you know, what do you think about it? You always felt inadequate by your father, and you know, Kim Jong Un just cries, and then he <laughs> pops. So like the people in North Korea looking at it, it's like that is a guy we had to worship all our life. That is a guy we had to believe that he can show up in the West and the East in one second, who can change the weather who can, you know, fly and who can do all these sorts of miracles, who is immortal, never dies, and whose spirit is with us all the time. And that is like all lie. So I do think if North Korean people see this movie, they might not be appreciate all those like sexual jokes or <laughs> racial, you know, those like jokes that isn't too considerate. The idea is going to change their mind. They will see a possibility what can be happening to North Koreans. They will dream that North Korea can have a sky someday. They dream that North Korea can be free without Kim dictators. So I extremely think that, you know, I think 
We have sent this movie with uh, some of the helps that we had underground in China and all this movie and then showed it to some people and some of them were really offended. I'm not gonna lie, they really got offended like who the heck are they, these American bastards, you know, making fun of our, our dear leader. But the thing is, they were brainwashed. You know, we cannot, like, cancel that out. But the thing is, even they say that because they were practiced, they were trying to say those things when they see something like that. It is going to see something in their mind that, like, your God that you all your life believed might not be a God. He might be just a liar, and a killer. That is enough to start revolution for me. What will change North Korea is not, you know, driving up tanks to North Korea, or it's not about, you know, the all of those things. I think what will change North Korea is going to happen through North Korean people. When they realize that they are slaves to this dictator, they realize that their life is taken away their rights and dignity has been taken away and they want that and they are ready to die for that. That's when we are going to see change in North Korea and that will change the course of our country forever. So I absolutely advocate that this movie should go into North Korea seen by every single person even though they say, oh I don't like this movie, this is too offensive. Still, that will do the effect of seeding a seed to see what can be possible. And a lot of, you know, like a lot of people in the countryside especially are brainwashed and I think that is more people should watch this movie. And, you know, this is like such a thing I've, I thought like people in the West were taking for granted because, you know, people were saying things like, oh, will North Koreans appreciate like what they're gonna think? I mean, I appreciate that question, but the thing is here, even if we watch the interview, we, you and I are not going to get executed. I didn't get executed when watching interview twice, but North Korean people do get executed and sent to concentration camp if they watch this movie called The Interview. So, you know, it is such a privilege for us to make fun of dictator. It is a you know, privilege for us to make this movie and watch these movies. So even though it was a good movie or a bad movie, I do think we should keep making these movies to offend dictators. Because one thing I learned through my activism is that as long as you do something that upsets the dictator, you are doing the right thing. If I do something that makes Kim Jong-un happy, I know that I'm doing a, such a bad job. So thank you guys for watching my video and I would love to hear your experiences seeing the movie and continue the discussion. So, Thank you and see you next time guys. Bye bye.